We are Ben and Shell, and along with our salty dog Blue, we are sailing our 30 foot sailboat along the top of Australia called Marabou. Last episode, we rounded the tip of Cape York after sailing from Northern Territory to the west coast of Queensland. This week, we enjoy the glassy summer waters of the far north. We get creative with our catch and cook while cruising in balmy conditions on our four day passage from Cape York to Cooktown and everywhere else in between. It's not long, however, until our first tropical low weather system of the season is upon us and the real fun begins. So subscribe and come along with us across the top of our great southern land and back again. Only four more days of sailing. We're going to Escape River six months later after we went the first time. The weather actually doesn't look any different apart from the fact that the wind's the other direction. <laughs> As you can hear, we are motor sailing. Winds weren't always in full force at this time of year, so we did have to use a little bit of diesel. But it was worth it. Just check out some of these views. River outside of the Pearl Farm. No one seems to be there at the moment. We're just gonna have a drink, something to eat, some tunes, some dance. <laughs> We left Escape River the next morning and began our four day passage down the east coast of Cape York. During monsoon season, the trade winds ease off and allow for a more leisurely cruise for us towards the south when northerly winds allow. Without 10 foot waves and trade wind haze blocking our view, we're treated to an array of colourful coastline as our backdrop. Something quite significant happened just before we arrived back to Cape York. 
In September 2022, over 36,000 hectares of land on Cape York Peninsula was handed back to the traditional custodians, eight years after native title rights were granted. This meant that the area that we're now cruising past is now recognised by the state of Queensland as the Apudama National Park and the Yamaran Washigan Islands, formerly the Jardine National Park and Denham National Park. The government has now rightfully returned a total of over 4 million hectares back to traditional owners on Cape York. To compare, that's roughly the size of Switzerland. So we were going to anchor at Bushy Islets, which has just gone past because we had no wind. But the wind's come back, so we're going to put the code C out and use the northerlies that finally set in to head to Cooktown. Only four more days of sailing. This is as full as sails get on our boat. Full main. Full code C. Well, it's the end of day one from Cape York to Cooktown on our four day stint. I'm gonna go to bed and have a sleep before my night shift. Not much happened today. We've changed sails only about seven times. <laughs> seven times because of the wind changes. And the Border Force plane weirdly came and said hello and what we're doing um, because I'm pretty sure they missed us when we went through the Gulf, so. Gotta keep you on your toes, Border Force. But nah, thanks for saying hi. <laughs> Trip past a bunch of islets, a couple of freighters. We're almost at Cape Grenville, and then we're going to head to Portland Roads and hopefully start a new day going from Lockhart River to Cape Hellville. Stay tuned for that. But apart from that, good night. When on passages, we don't get to spend a lot of time together and it can feel a little bit lonely out here. But now and then, we're reminded of why we live on the ocean, when we're treated to shows of her strength and wild beauty just like this one. A playful pod of dolphins rode the wake of Marabou's bow for over an hour as we sailed steadily past Cape Grenville at sunset. I'm constantly in awe of the ocean and the violent yet beautiful delights that she produces every single day out here. Time just feels like it stops out here compared to the rush on land. The trade-off with living out sea though is missing family, friends and a lot of special occasions. But it's truly a rewarding playground of amphibious gifts and a sensory heaven. We also happen to be cruising during the last season before internet or Starlink is available on this stretch of the Australian coast. And although I always applaud progress, I couldn't help but wonder if cruising these ancient waters and coastlines would feel the same being so connected still to the stresses of the world via the internet. But regardless of all the other wonders, I'm grateful to call Far North Queensland my home and sit here in mindfulness during these beautiful moments that we have out sea.
As the sun rose over Restoration Island and Lockhart River the following morning, our friends again danced playfully in the boat's wake as we began day two of our passage to Cooktown. We cruised blissfully on a beam reach for the rest of the day and soon day two morphed into day three and day four as we approached the Flinders Island group ready to round Cape Melville. Just at the Flinders group, past that, just over here. Bit of nasty weather coming in that we're sort of driving down the coast. It sort of keeps coming to say hello and then goes away. Hopefully we reach Cooktown before it really sets in. The Flinders group's awesome. Good anchorage, lots of fish, two Aboriginal paintings in there. All in all, pretty good spot. Just pulled up to Cape Melville, aka Cape Hellville, and we've got a big storm behind us. We've got about an hour until we get there. Hopefully, we get there before most of this hits Hellville because the wind comes down the mountains, which is, I think it's like, what, 300 meters, and it just funnels down and intensifies the wind. This was quite dark, the storm, but now it's sort of gone grey, which is good, yeah, it's just rain. But yeah, the sea state's picking up. It's still okay though. It's just coming, just forming. Looks nice around the cut, around the, um, Seems to be going a bit more, a bit more off to the side than following just straight down with the wind. Yeah. It's always when the camera's off that cool shit happens and I just went to fix the GoPro to put it on my head and the attachment broke because it's all rusty from salt water. I'm just charging the GoPro now. Hopefully I can actually catch something that we always tell you guys is like super cool but we never get it on camera. It's actually called Cape Melville. Apparently it's actually quite beautiful and there's a lighthouse there you can go up so when the weather's quite fair it's not too bad but when it's not it's just not my favourite place. It's probably my least favourite place on the entire Australian East Coast that I've seen. Alright, wind's coming now so we're going to put this camera down and get the GoPro out.
down, Captain. Good, good racing, racing this guy to the to the pinch point of the corner. Shipping channel comes quite close to the uh, to the headland, so we we've just reduced sail to allow him to to go around the corner first, and hopefully we'll just stay away, stay out of his wake. Yeah, he did a good job of threading the needle through the rocks over there. Keep us out of the shipping channel. Uh, he's heading straight for the corner, and he'll be. <laughs> Same way. Way. Same way. Same thing. <laughs> Reef Jib. Cape Melville. We've got about a nautical mile off that headland, and then that's the shipping channel. So we've got a mile that we can that we can use around the corner. Cool. Yeah, and then we both go down the coast together. Yeah. That night, Marabou was tested by the sea gods, and although we were beyond impressed with how she sailed, it was no place for a camera whilst we took single-handed watches in blinding rain. I was pretty stoked to see dusk illuminate Cape Flattery and give way to welcome protection the next morning. It's the middle of the day of day four and we are heading into Cooktown now. We were alive and kicking all night <laughs> um, and we're pretty happy to go into Cooktown for a burger and a beer and a sleep. That'd be good too. Everything is just everywhere <laughs> and that's tomorrow problem. Should we go for a walk? Funny how like four days. Yeah. Go for a walk to the Cook Town Park? Yeah. yeah. Cooktown. 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 Anchored up a few hours ago. Just seen some cows walking out. Old Blue's getting a bit excited. Poor Blue. We haven't taken him for a W yet. A walk. Holes. Blue finally got to take his glorious land poops before we headed off to the pub. So we'll see you next episode where you'll need your fins because we're going back under the sea. Listen, I need to get to the East Australian Current, EAC. Oh, dude. You're riding it, dude. Check it out.
want the cameras on us. <laughs> but if it's going that way, are we going to get it? And I won't hear you behind the camera. Oh, well. Tough shit, then. <laughs> Just sailing into the passage. Sailing into the passage. <coughs> Choices, boo. Honestly, we've done enough overnights and passages in the span of three to four weeks that we could have crossed the Atlantic Ocean by now. <laughs> That's Mr. Grateful to you. There's the cows. The Cooktown cows. Or buffalo or whatever. Go on! <laughs> Useless agility dog, eh? I don't know if I can use that because it's got copyright tunes in it.